In this tutorial, I will show you how to add a glow effect to bright objects in Blender. Now there's two different methods that I'm going to show you to get the glow effect. The first one is using Blender Eevee and using the bloom feature in Blender Eevee. And then the second method is using the glare node in Blender's compositor using the cycles render engine. Because this real time bloom effect only works in Blender Eevee. So if you're using cycles, you can use the glare node instead in the compositor. And I'll also have timestamps in the video description for each methods of the glow effect. Now the blend file that I'm using is the finished tutorial result of my sci-fi mech robot tutorial series. If you'd like to check out that tutorial series, I'll have the link in the video description. All right, so the first method that I'm going to show you is the bloom effect in Blender Eevee. So right up here, if you go to the render properties, make sure you're using Blender Eevee, and then you can see right down here that there is this bloom right here. So you can check mark that, and that is going to add the bloom effect. And also hold down the Z button and move your mouse up here and make sure you're in the rendered view. You can also just click on this button right here to go into the rendered mode to see the bloom. So now that we have this turned on, you can see that bright objects are glowing. So if I zoom in here, you can see these objects right here, these have emission materials. So the material is actually emitting light and you can see that those buttons there have that nice red glow around them. Now also if I press shift A and go here to mesh, I'm just going to add like a UV sphere and I'm going to bring the UV sphere up here. When you add new objects, they actually don't have a material. So it just adds this basic white material. And you can see because this is a white material and there's bright light shining on it, it's very reflective. And so it is adding the bloom effect, even though it isn't actually emitting light, it is reflecting light. So it does give that bloom. But with this object selected, I can click on new here to add a new material. And then I can click on the surface right here. And I could just change this to the emission material. And now it's actually going to be emitting light. Now it isn't very bright, so it doesn't really look like it's emitting light. But if I just take the strength value and turn this up, now you can see this is actually emitting light. So it's this glowing sphere. And as it's brighter and brighter, the bloom is going to be stronger because this object is emitting more light. Now I can also change the color of this emission. So I can click on this color right here and I could change this to a color. And you can see if I don't make it very saturated, if I kind of keep the colors up here close to the white values, then you can see that the sphere is actually white, but then the glow around the sphere is the color. But if I bring this all the way to the end of the color wheel and make it very saturated, now it does look pretty light, but it looks much more strong. And why the sphere is fully white is just because the strength is so bright. So if I just turn the strength down, maybe to just like 10 or 20, now you can see it looks much more like that color. So the sphere is actually blue. Now let's head right back over here to the render properties, and we're just going to open up the bloom tab. So you can see right here in the bloom settings, there is also a color. So just to show you real quick, you don't need to follow along with this, but I'm just going to close this window and then I'm going to click right here and split the window. And then right down here, I'm going to change this to the material properties. This way I can change the material and the bloom at the same time. So I can click on the color here and I can make this a color, let's say a yellow color. So let's say I want to make the bloom yellow. And now if I look around here, you can see that the bloom effect is actually yellow. But if I look over here at this object, you can see it kind of just looks green. And I'm going to go right here to the strength value and turn the strength value up. And you can see this color right here, this color from the emission is actually blue, but then the color of the bloom is yellow. And so you can see these two colors are clashing. And so they're kind of blending together and making a green glow. So for instance, in a scene like this, where I have some red lights and some red over here, but then also some blue lights, it might be better just to make the color of the bloom white. So now this light is glowing red, but then this light is glowing blue. So this is what I would do if I had a scene which has multiple light colors but maybe you want to have all the lights in the scene be a specific glow color, then you could use this color. So for instance, maybe I want everything to be red. I could just turn this way down to like a bright red color. And then on this color here on the emission, I could just maybe turn this to white. And now you can see that all of the glow looks very red. So this looks red, but then also the glow there looks red and down here as well. Now, if you want to change the size of the glow, you can change the strength value, but you can also just change the radius on the bloom settings. So I can just take this radius value and I can drag it. So you can see if I drag the radius value all the way up to like a 10, now that glow is going to be very big. You can see even really far away, there still is a little bit of that blue glow. But then if I turn the radius way down just to like a 0.5, now I have to zoom in there and there's just a tiny little bit of glow on the edges. And then there also is an intensity value value. So I could turn this intensity value way down and you can see it's very, very subtle. So if I look really closely, you can just see there's a tiny little bit of 
a glow on the edges, or I could turn the intensity way up. I could even click on the intensity value and just change it to like a value of one. And now you can see it's very, very bright, um, but this is way too bright for most things. So I can just turn this intensity down to 0.1. So you can just play around with these two values to get a bloom effect that you like. So this bloom effect in Eevee is very cool, but what if you're using cycles? So right here on the render engine, I'm going to click on Eevee, and I'm just going to instead change this to cycles. So you can see that there is no bloom option in the cycle settings, and also there is no bloom appearing. So if you're using the cycles render engine, then the best way to get this glowing effect is by using the glare node in the compositor. So the first thing that we need to do is render out the scene, and then after it's rendered, we can add that in with the compositing. So real quick, I'm just gonna give this scene a render. So now I'm just gonna click right over here, and this is gonna go to a Blender's compositing tab. I'm gonna make the timeline smaller because I'm not doing an animation, and then I'm going to click on Use Nodes, and that is going to tell Blender to use the compositing nodes. And then to preview the render in the background, I can control shift and select the render layers, and that is going to add the viewer node, and that is using the feature from the Node Wrangler add-on. The Node Wrangler add-on is built into Blender, so you can just go to Blender's user preferences and enable it, or you can also just press Shift A, go to the search here, and you can search for a viewer node, and then you can just plug the viewer node up to the render layers. So now you can see this in the background, and also make sure the backdrop button is turned on, and I'm also going to press the V key. That is going to zoom out the background so I can see it. So now let's add the glare node. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to add the glare. So just search for glare, and we're going to drop it right in here, and make sure it is plugged up to the viewer and the composite so that you can preview it. Now the glare node does have a bunch of different settings. I'm just going to go over some of the main ones that I think will be the most useful. So if you click right here on the top drop down, you can see there's some different settings here for the glare node. Now the first one here, the default one is streaks, and this does look a little bit different. It does look a little bit different from the bloom in Eevee. You can see that there are some little streaks here going back and forth. So if you click on the streaks right here, you could instead change it to ghosts. And this one is a little bit weird. I don't really use it for that many things. Um, you could also use the simple star and that is kind of similar. It's kind of similar to the streaks. Um, but what I want to use is the fog glow. So click right up here and change it to fog glow. And probably for most things, this is the result that you're trying to get. So you can see there's some really nice glow there on all the bright areas. So within the fog glow setting, there are some different settings here. So you can change the size and that is actually going to change how big the glow is. So you can see if I turn this down, now the glow effect is very, very small. Or I could turn this all the way up to the max, which is nine, and now it's much bigger. Now, if I hover my mouse over the threshold value, it gives us a very good description. The glare filter will only be applied to pixels brighter than this value. So let's say I only wanted this sphere to be glowing, but I didn't want anything else to be glowing. I could turn up the threshold, and this light is the brightest light. So as I turn it up, the threshold is going to start to take away the lights which are not as bright. So I've now turned the threshold up to a value of seven and you can see that the glare on the side of the robot isn't really there at all but it still is there where the buttons are so that might be the effect that you're going for I could keep on turning the threshold up so maybe I'll just turn this up to like a 20 and now you can see that the robot isn't really glowing at all and only the light right up here is glowing or I could turn the threshold way down to like a 0.1 and now it's going to be very strong and you can see pretty much the entire robot is glowing to some amount and then you can see there is this medium here if I click on this, this is changing the quality. So I could change it to low quality and you can see it actually composites really fast. But if I zoom in here, I can press Alt V and that's going to zoom in the background. If you zoom in here, it is kind of hard to see, but the quality is a little bit lower. Whereas if I change this to high, it is going to take a little bit longer to composite. You can see that's definitely taking a bit longer, but now it's finished. But you can see when I change it to high quality, it also makes the size much smaller. Um, but if I change this to low, then it's going to be really big. If I zoom way in here, it is kind of hard to see, but for instance, you might notice right there that there's kind of a little square kind of popping out, and that is because it's a bit low quality, whereas if I just had this like set to medium, then that would be a bit more smooth. I think medium is a pretty good one. You could change it to high or low, depending on your scene. I usually just leave this to medium. Now, if you wanted even more glare, there are a few ways to do this. One way that you could do this is just by turning up the emission strength, but that also might brighten up too much of the scene. So what you 
can also do is just duplicate the glare node. So I'm going to click on the glare node and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and I'm just going to stick it right there. So now there are two glare nodes and so it's going to double up on the brightness there of that glow. So you can now see it's much stronger and you could keep on doing this. If you add more though, it is going to take longer to composite because there are more nodes, but you can see now the glare is much stronger. And there we have it. So that is how you add a glow effect in Cycles and Eevee. And if you'd like to watch the complete tutorial series on how to create this sci-fi mech robot, I'll have a link in the description to the tutorial playlist. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, I'll also leave links in the description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. But I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.